I've gotten a lot of requests to create a beginner's guide to using DaVinci Resolve's audio panel, Fairlight. So in this tutorial, that's exactly what we're gonna be taking a look at. And if you're new to DaVinci Resolve and you wanna learn how to use it better, check out our Learn DaVinci Resolve 16 in 16 minutes tutorial. I'll link it in the description below. Now let's hop into DaVinci. All right, so we're here in DaVinci's editing panel. If the editing panel is brand new to you, it's where you put your video edit together. You can do some more general audio editing work here in the edit panel, but Fairlight is completely dedicated to audio work. And that's what we're gonna be looking at. So here in the timeline, we have one of my YouTube talking head clips. Let's go into our Fairlight panel, which you can do by clicking on the music note icon here. And the same audio that we just saw in our edit panel is here in the Fairlight panel, which we'll look at in just a second. First, I'll show you around Fairlight so you get to know the layout and what does what. We have our mixer panel here. The mixer panel allows you to balance audio levels, add effects, EQ, dynamics, and pan your audio. We have our meters button and shows the monitoring panel, which contains our audio and video content that's currently on our timeline. Metadata is where data about your clip or audio or whatever you have selected on your timeline is shown. The inspector panel gives you quick access to several commonly used effects and tools and you can scroll this vertical slider to increase or decrease the height of your tracks and use this horizontal slider to zoom in or out. We can drag our cursor over just our music track and hovering your mouse over the end of the track gives you the ability to trim the audio by dragging it into the left. Let's zoom into our audio to get a closer look at it. And to get more organized here, we can rename our audio tracks by double clicking where it says audio one. Let's rename this track dialogue. We'll do the same thing here by renaming the audio two track music. Next, let's change the color of this music track by selecting it, right clicking and choosing clip color. And I like to have a system. I recommend you create a system for yourself as well, where for me, I always make my dialogue the default green and my music navy blue. So we'll select navy, great. On each of our tracks, we have the lock icon that we can use to lock a track so changes can't be made to it. We have R, which we could select if we wanted to record audio like a voiceover directly into DaVinci and this specific project. We have S to solo a track so we only hear the audio on that track. And we have M to mute a track. If we wanna change where our playhead is within our tracks, we can grab it and drag it like so. Here we have several tools like the selection tool, the range selection tool that allows you to select a specific part of your clip, edit selection mode, the razor tool to cut your clip, our snap tool, which I always have turned on and I recommend that you do too. I'll show you what it does right now. So I'm gonna first turn it off for a second by clicking on it to deselect it, grab my music audio, and I want it to sit right beside the end of my dialogue audio. But see, as I move it closer to the dialogue, it's very hard to tell if it's right up against it or if it's starting to replace some of the dialogue audio. I'll put that music back where it was, click on the snap icon to activate it, and try that again. See how now the music track snaps to the dialogue track really quickly and easily? Well, that's why snap being turned on comes in really handy. When it's activated, it will snap your clips or your tracks together. Try it out, it makes editing way easier. Just gonna put the music back in its original spot. We also have some markers. So we have this type of marker that sits inside your clip. You can change the color of it if you'd like. I'll just undo that using Command Z on my keyboard. And we have this type of marker that will sit over top of your clips wherever your playhead is. And you can drag it wherever you'd like on your timeline, click on it, add notes or keywords to it if you'd like, and you can change the color of it too. Markers are another great tool to use when you are working with multiple clips or a larger project. They make editing more efficient, more organized, and just easier overall. We have different timeline views here. You can click them and check them out and choose which one you prefer. We can use this slider down here at the bottom of our timeline, drag it to the left or to the right to move over in our timeline. And we can do the same thing at the top of our timeline here by moving it right or left as well. We're gonna add an in and an out point to the beginning and the end of this clip. I'm gonna tell you what they are and what they do in a second. So use your up arrow key on your keyboard to go to the beginning of the clip. Next, press I on your keyboard to create an in point and press the down arrow key on your keyboard to go to the end of the clip and press O to create an out point. 
in and out points used on specific parts of your timeline, select whatever's within those points, and in this case, we set an in and an out point so that we can utilize the loop tool up here, which we'll check out coming up. If it's activated, it shows in red and it will loop whatever's within your in and out point. You can hit the space bar on your keyboard to play or pause playback. So I just hit it to pause playback. And this is something I always used to forget how to do when I started working in DaVinci. So if you want to clear your in and out point, which you will want to do at times as you start editing more regularly, what you need to do to clear it is go up to mark and select clear in and out. Or you can press Alt and the X key on your keyboard. We can increase or decrease the volume of an audio track in a few different ways. A quick way to do so is to hover your cursor over this horizontal line in the track, click on it and drag it higher or lower like so. I'll undo that. Another way to adjust the volume of a track is to select it and go up to the inspector panel and where it says clip volume, make sure you see the red dot which indicates the effect is active and you can use the volume slider like so. I'll play this through by hitting my space bar. We release new video editing and filming and click on meters to get a closer look at the volume levels. Side note, but very important, when you're recording audio, you want to make sure it's not peaking from the get-go. So depending on the device that you're using to record, in a lot of cases, it should show audio meters because if your audio is peaked in the recording itself, you can't fix it in post. There are like band-aid solutions, but you don't want to do the band-aid solutions. You want to just record it right from the get-go. Let's increase the size of our track and scroll over until we spot an area of audio that's taller than most of our other audio, like right here. So we'll manually add keyframes to lower the decibels of this specific part of our waveform. Go to clip volume and click on the keyframe here to place it. And you can see it's shown up right here. Now I'll add another keyframe just after the waveform spike ends. And I'll add a third keyframe over the tallest part of the spike itself right here. Now hovering your cursor over the keyframe in the center, you can click down and reduce the volume of this part of audio slightly, and you can see the waveform shrinking as we do this. After you manually keyframe and adjust peaks in your audio, you wanna listen back to make sure that the changes you made weren't too abrupt or too noticeable. You really don't want them to be noticeable at all. And another way you can add keyframes is you can hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and click on the volume line like so. I'm gonna quickly go over my dialogue and adjust any of the remaining louder areas of my audio. Awesome. And now under the Inspector tab, let's listen to this audio as I adjust the pitch so you can hear its effect. We release new video editing. <laughs> Okay, so that's a really quick way to change someone's voice and make them sound like a chipmunk. Let's hit the reset toggle to bring it back to default. Cool. Now, I prefer using the equalizer EQ effect, which we're going to look at coming up. But in the inspector panel, we also have the option to turn clip equalizer on. And by default, it has band one activated, which cuts the low pitch frequencies of the track that we have selected on our timeline. And band four is also activated, which cuts the higher frequencies. We could also manually adjust these right within clip equalizer as well. Next, this is a feature I love when I'm trying out different music in my project. Let's find our music audio, which is here in the media pool, select it, right click on it and choose replace selected clip and now we can choose a different music track select this one here open and this new music track has replaced the previous one let's use the slider at the bottom of the screen and drag it to the left to bring us to the beginning of these audio tracks and notice that oftentimes in music tracks there will be a second or so of no audio in the recording before the song begins well, I want my music to begin immediately. So let's select the music track and hover our cursor over the very beginning of it, which brings up the trim tool and drag it inwards to the point we'd like this track to begin. I'll drag the music to meet up with the beginning of the dialogue. And now go to the end of the track, drag the end of the music track out to meet up with the end of the dialogue again. Let's press S on the A1 track to solo our dialogue so we aren't hearing the music as well. 
With the music turned off, let's listen through to a bit of the dialogue. New video editing and filmmaking tutorials every week, and we'll see you in the There's a subtle background noise that I'd like to remove, so next we'll add an effect to reduce the background noise of our dialogue. By going over to the mixer panel, and here's the dialogue track, so click on effects, and the plus icon here, and this will bring up a bunch of different effect options for us. Let's choose noise reduction and noise reduction again, and here we can listen through to the defaulted noise reduction that's been applied. And remember, we have loop on, which will continuously loop the audio as we're listening through. Every week, and we'll see you in another video. Okay, so the default noise reduction effect did a good job of removing the background noise, but it's also made my voice sound a bit robotic. Adjusting these dials down here can help reduce that robotic sound and also keep that background noise low and not audible in my dialogue, but looking at noise reduction effects and all of these different options for adjustments is an entire tutorial on its own. So let me know in the comments below if you want to learn more about how to use noise reduction. Okay, so we'll close this window and we now have the noise reduction effect applied to our dialogue track. If you want to add more effects to the same audio track, you could do so by clicking on this plus icon here and choosing more effects. I also work with EQ when I'm working with dialogue. So beside where it says EQ here, there's this blue line, click on it and it opens up our equalizer panel. I usually turn band one on, which cuts the lower frequencies and I bring it to around 100 because with dialogue, you don't need the frequencies of 100 and below. And I turn band six on and adjust the frequencies to around 14K. And remember, you can turn the effect on and off to listen to the before and after. We release new video editing and filmmaking tutorials Okay, and that's made a very subtle difference in the audio, and overall it's a good practice to get into using EQ, and at the very least using band one and band six, like I just showed you, to cut out some of those high and low frequencies that you don't need in your dialogue audio. I'll just close this window and you can see that your EQ has been applied to the A1 track here. To add a track, you can bring your cursor over where it says A2, right click and click on add track and you can choose to add a mono track, stereo track and so on. We'll add a stereo track which you can see has been added right here. To delete tracks you can right click and select delete track. Scroll back up here. Let's say you decide you want to remove the effects on one of your audio tracks like we'll remove the effects in the work we've done on this dialogue track here. Right click on the track, choose remove attributes and by clicking audio attributes you can remove anything you've done to the audio, like the volume adjustments, plugins, and equalizer. You can also individually checkmark any of these options if you want to. I'll click apply, and you can see that the audio waveform has changed and those effects have been removed. Just wanted to show you that, so I'll press Command Z on my keyboard to undo that. And another cool thing that you can do is right click on your audio clip, choose find in media pool, and doing this will highlight that audio like so. So when you're working with a lot of different assets on your timeline, being able to find that original clip or audio track in your project comes in really handy. Let's go to the end of our tracks here. And what I like to do when I'm working with music is fade out the end of the track so that the music doesn't just like abruptly end. To add a fade, bring your cursor to the top right corner of the track, click on this point here and drag it inwards. Doing this creates a linear sort of fade. We'll just increase this fade a little more by dragging it a little more inward. You can also click on this point in the fade here to round out the fade. I find it more pleasing to the ear. So try that out and I recommend that when you're working with a talking head clip and you have music underneath, you always fade out your music. So now you know how to do it. One more thing I wanna show you is, I'll just zoom over here, is that I generally like to have my dialogue stay around minus 10 to minus 15 decibels. So as I play it through, I'll adjust the meters here. Every week and we'll see you in another video. Great. I like my music to sit around minus 25 to minus 30 decibels. Filmmaking tutorials every week, and we'll see you in another video. And main here consists of all of the different audio tracks together. So you can adjust the slider here if you'd like. Video editing and filmmaking tutorials every week. I'll double click on it to reset it.
All right, so that is a look at how to use the audio panel Fairlight in DaVinci Resolve. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and found it helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And to stay up to date and learn more about filmmaking every single week, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you are notified when a new video tutorial or gear review is released. Thanks, and we will see you in another video. Bye.